evening and welcome to Saratoga Springs Planning Commission. Tonight is January 25th and we would like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. We've asked Scott Carlson if he would lead us. Let's start with roll call. We'll start with Commissioner Steele. Roll call, Chris. Sandra Steele. Brian Chapman. Kirk Wilkins. Ken Kilgore. Troy Cunningham. And city staff. Kevin Thurman. Gordon Miner. Paul Norris Shepard, sorry. Eric Carroll. <laughs> David Stratton. All right, great. And we have a quorum. This is a public, e public meeting, so we've set aside some time for public comment. If there are anybody in the audience that would like to come forward and discuss things that are not on the agenda tonight, please keep your comments to about three minutes, and we'll open up public comment at this time. Okay, this is, we'll close public comment, and we'll move on to item number four. This is a public hearing. It's a rezone from neighborhood commercial and agriculture to community commercial for the point at Saratoga Springs and a concept plan review. Located approximately 1186 North Redwood Road, Romo Development LLC, Marion Hill is the applicant. And we'll turn the time over to Sarah Carroll, who is our senior planner for the presentation. All right, so the property currently has two zones on it, agriculture and, I've forgotten, neighborhood commercial? Uh, I forgot what purple is. Anyhow, it currently has two zones on it. And they're requesting the community commercial zone, which is consistent with our land use element of our general plan. Uh, just to give you some background, a few years ago, before we had the community commercial zone, they, this property was presented and requested for regional commercial, and that had a conditional approval subject to them entering into a development agreement and limiting some of the uses and then maintaining the landscaping out front. And we, uh, with the community commercial zone zoning request, we don't need to limit any of the uses because that's what it, the zone is intended to do, be next to communities. And then... Um, Another thing you'll see in the staff report is there's a small piece of property in front that was dedicated with a previous plat that we would like to trade long-term maintenance, uh, or we're suggesting that we could trade long-term maintenance and deed that back to them. They would then own it and maintain it long-term and the city wouldn't have to do that. And that's the trail and landscaping in front of the property. And then it could also count towards their landscape requirements. As far as the concept plan goes, there's three buildings shown and there's been indication that another building would be proposed in the future and that that would possibly be a medical office building. Uh, based on everything that you're seeing here, there are two remnant parcels that were left out. They were, uh, they're under the own, same ownership and they're under contract with, with uh, the current buyer and the app who's the applicant but they weren't included in the concept plan so those will need to be added it won't change the plan a lot it'll make the uh, it'll shift the drive by all over which will be a better site layout and then it it'll allow them to meet their landscaping requirement as well um, if if we don't end up trading the front either way it'll allow them to be over if they have it there was um the we would like to know the square footage of the future building, at least the max, so we can count the parking and make sure it's going to be adequate. They don't want to build the parking lot in phases, which makes sense as far as um, having unfinished edges and storm runoff and things like that. So they do want to build the entire parking lot at one time. However, we would need to know an anticipated size of the future building. And then some other comments, there needs to be five feet between buildings and asphalt, except at drive up windows, and they need to address that comment. And the additional property on the north will help them meet that requirement as well. So they'll still be able to have the, the buildings that are shown. 
as far as the landscape plan, there's uh, several comments on the conceptual la landscape plan. They will need fencing on the east property line because that's a budding residential development. They will need to add two trees to each large landscape island. There's some that don't, and it's and it's because there were lights shown in those. However, it's still a code requirement, so they'll have to position the lights in the trees so that uh, both code requirements can be met. And then they'll need one small tree or one tree for the small landscape islands, and they'll need um, a, a buffer around the parking. So wherever parking is next to a property line, they'll need 10 feet. So they'll have to add that to uh, the east and the north property lines. This plan is slightly short on landscaping, and as I've mentioned, they can meet that in, in uh, several ways by adding the entire property under their ownership to the plan and then the city might also deed a large park strip area in front that would be subject to city council approval here are the proposed elevations they're all similar except for the color scheme and then two of them have a drive up window and one does not and then these are this is a list of the conceptual plan recommendations that we covered and then a few more and there also the planning review checklist has several items that they'll need to address and submit with their site plan application and then there is a recommended motion for approval of the rezone from uh, to community commercial thank you very much for that presentation is the applicant here Hi there. Would you like to come join us? Sure. If you could state your name and your address for the, uh, for the record. You can have a seat right here. Just make sure the microphone's on. Marlon Hill. Hey, Marlon. Did you have anything you wanted to add to the presentation tonight? No, we're working on all the items that she mentioned, and uh, they should be brought in sometime tomorrow or Monday. All been addressed. Okay, great. Then we'll go ahead and open up uh, public comment for item number four at this time. If you have any comments, please come forward and state your name and address for the record for item number four. That was easy. We'll go ahead and close public comment at this time and open it up to the Planning Commission for comment. I got the look. Commissioner Steele. She won. I would like to uh, do a little more explanation. Uh, you are aware that medical offices require five parking spaces per thousand. Correct. Okay, just want to make sure because the last time it was I saw it, it was parked for less than that with a building. So I just wanted to make sure you understood that. Yes. Yeah, no, I do. I do. So the corner building doesn't have a drive-through on it or office and medical, there might be a very light retail that partners in the group occupying a portion of that. Okay. That will be a, a medical use, it's a dental office. Um, we do have a group looking in the back for, this is future, for medical use, but the other two buildings will have approximately 10 per thousand parking ratio to cover any type of uses that so they'll be heavily parked for okay and so you're saying this uh the southernmost building will be the one that is used for medical office or mostly yes it'll ha it might have a slight uh, uh light retail use but um the partner is a dentist he wants to keep it more professional uh dental office type use so he has tinkered with taking the whole building so he'd bring orthodontics in as well but we haven't come to that stage yet but i know he's taking at least three thousand feet okay well my comment may not be if that happens and there's no retail there then this may not apply but for pedestrian connectivity uh, we have in our code safe pedestrian connection shall be made between buildings within a development to any streets adjacent to the um, property uh, to any pedestrian facilities that connect 
the property when feasible between developments and from buildings to the public sidewalk to minimize the need to walk from within the parking lot among cars. Well, part of that is going out to uh, Redwood Road. And right now, you can say, well, nobody's going to walk that far. Or, you know, they're, they're not, there's no uh, pedestrian. Thinking the lifespan of your building, which will probably, we could safely say, 30 years, we might actually have a bus line. And so if we want to get people in to a retail, it would be nice to have a sidewalk to that southern, from, the, from Redwood Road to um, the building. And that's I just I believe there is a are you talking about the southern building where this cutout is? Is that where you're talking from uh, from from the building to the street? Yeah. There yes. Is a, there is a I believe that is a sidewalk out in front. There's a, a sidewalk to the to the um, parking lot. Mm -hmm. But there's it doesn't seem to be one from the building to Redwood Road. Looks like, it, and the Redwood. the elevations have doors there, but I don't. Well, the doors are so the back doors are generally for fire escape and, and things like that. So if that's the ones that you're talking in the back of the building, that's what they're. For. Well, they they look like glass doors. They are. And so somebody's going may try to get in those doors, uh, and if it's for access, uh, fire access, then you still need at least a way for a wheelchair to get out and around. There should be sidewalk in the back. Well, there sh I agree, there should be. I think there is. Is there? Well, okay. So. It's a comment I've given in the in the. I've given you that comment, so hopefully okay. your we'll, okay. we'll address your designers that. are working on that. Okay. Sarah, is that the concept plan recommendation number eight that you, where it says add pedestrian connectivity? Is this part of that? Right. Okay. okay. Oh, I know what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So you're looking for a sidewalk along the backside of the building. Yeah, that's normal. Thank you. Really? Okay. So, in general, is the applicant okay with the planning staff's concept plan recommendations? Yes. Yeah, we're good. Perfect. Um, if the, so, uh, if the city does not deed the trail, then what are you planning to do? Do you have a, a plan in place? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we've got some additional areas that we could landscape if necessary. So. Um, I guess that, that all comes up in the... Uh, uh, planter shrub oh is the uh, oh this is a question to staff um, I thought the weed barriers are no longer required by by city code they're not required okay um, like but this is a requirement but Is a under planter shrub beds so we have here planting a shrub shrub beds shall have high quality weed barrier or pre emergent now it turns out the applicant is doing that so that's it's not an issue but is that something that we're requiring or we shouldn't the reason I ask is eventually this will be a administrative action and if we're requiring it that way then I don't want that to be a conflict. They could do either, and their plan, they put that on their plan without any direction from us to do so. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, if it's not direction, then why do we write on here it complies? You know what I mean? Under planter shrub beds, under the checklist, we, we say that uh, weed, weed barriers, um, it shall have high quality weed barrier. Oh, I can change the checklist. Okay. And um, can the app can comply with the 20% landscaping requirement and also add six more trees as requested? Yeah, and I believe we're address like I That's said, we are going to address with. that. And okay, we'll address the sidewalk as well. Great, thanks. That's it for me. Commissioner Cunningham, did you have some questions? 
I was just confused on, um, it's just after the map, I can't really see a page number. When it says application review checklist, it says type of action administrative. This legislative? This is legislative. I'm just wondering why it said administrative. Oh, the rezone. So, so it's for up. the rezone <coughs> is legislative. However, when you see the site plan, it will be administrative. So this is kind of for later then, it's not. Right, so the checklist is directed towards the site layout rather than the oh, zone okay. change. All right, where the drive throughs are, is there gonna be like any kind of berm or anything between? There can be, that we haven't given them that comment, but we can give that comment. Where I was just wondering the aesthetics of driving down Redwood Road and looking over and seeing a drive through I, I don't know. I just, I think the buildings look nice. I just don't like the idea of the drive-throughs. It's kind of hard if you're going to put them back against the street, or if they're they're usually the other way around. But the way that the buildings are designed, they're the other opposite direction, so the entryway is coming off the park. Right. So it's a kind of a city walkway. Type. I do like the, the 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 parking is away from the. The uh, street and the buildings are closer to the street. I like that. Well, you could. I mean, if you want to address the drive-through in somewhat form, you could do some. We could do some bushes along that back side to kind of maybe. The, the only thing I'm thinking is that in the evening when somebody's driving through, the lights hitting the cars. I'm, anyway, that's they normally. I think they would pretty much due to the long distance there. Most of the stacking would be on the back, so it wouldn't. Okay. Be, you know, it wouldn't be sitting on the. I think you're seeing where the entryway is. Usually it takes eight, nine cars from drive through back, and you're probably going to be well, in the very don't they, corner. They would come in and then have to go around. They'd come in and go around, but they wouldn't be sitting, I don't believe, on the northern end of the parcel. They'd actually come around. And, but the, still, the, for that one stretch, the lights would be going into the... That's anyway. that's the same as coming out of the property. It's this, you know, and coming out on the street. Those. Oh, well, that's true. That's just as probably more because people will be sitting in that to make turns right or left. I think this, uh, you know, the stacking is usually about eight to ten cars stacking from the drive-through pickup window. So most of them will make the turn and sit and wait. All right. Thanks. That's all I had. I was, I was just going to point out to the planning commission. I hope. I don't want you to, I mean, we want, want to make the best use of your time as possible. Um, you're kind of getting into some of the site plan issues that you'll look at later down the road. Um, right now, this is just a recommendation based on the rezone and the criteria that's, that's listed there. It's very, very basic. It talks about compliance with the general plan and some of the broader policy goals of the general plan and, and, and also a rezoning ordinance. So I hate thank, for you to have to you. go through this again and in a month or two when they bring the site plan for approval. My, my question is directed directly at that. So normally when we, when we do a rezone, we have, we tie it to a plot or it, is it written currently in a way that if, uh, if he decides to do some other kind of construction on the site that this, the rezone falls back? Well, I think you want to look at the general plan and I look at the, I'm assuming that this is, the, the land use in here that's being proposed is consistent with the general plan. That's fine. I was, I was just so wondering. We, we typically, we, we typically re just we don't like to do conditional rezones if we can help it. Um, okay. is there a just reason to look at that? the broader policies of the general plan, and if it's if the rezone is consistent with that, then that that makes the most sense, and then they can they have the entitlement under under the zoning ordinance in place. Okay. That makes okay. sense. Any other comments? I wrap it up. Okay, I just wanted to thank you for your compliance and your attitude in, in um, complying with the concept plan recommendations and, and working with the city. So um, you're not done just yet. We have, no we have to do a little something here. Sure. But um, I'll entertain a motion. I move to forward a positive recommendation to the City Council for a rezone from neighborhood commercial and agricultural to community commercial for approximately 3.91 acres located at approximately 1186 North Redwood Road with the findings and conditions below. We have a motion from Commissioner Chapman. Do we have a second? Second. 
a second from Commissioner um, Christensen, or sorry, Cunningham, excuse me. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you for your time. Sorry about that, Commissioner Cunningham. I owe you one. All right, let's move on to, uh, I have two. We'll move on to item number five. This is a public hearing, community and village plan for the Alpine School District, Saratoga Springs Middle School, located at the northwest corner of Tanner Lane and Redwood Road. Frank Pulley is the applicant, and this is presented by Planning Director Dave Stroud. We'll turn the time over to Dave. Correct, this is the Alpine School District. They've obviously have had a need for some time for another school facility, and probably more than this one. But this time, they are ready to go forward with a middle school. The property you see here on the map, outlined in the blue, is where it's located. They're just on the west side of Redwood Road, just north of Tanner Lane. Uh, the adjacent uses are uh, residential, a church. Uh, across Redwood Road is single-family residential also. And of course, the PC zone uh, with the remainder of the property. The school is looking at buying a portion of, of that lot you see there. And so they will have to go through the subdivision process also. Um, but the adjacent uses, uh, residential and a church, uh, just <clears throat> some of the projects are not sure what's going on. Of course, this is governed by the, the DAP, the District Area Plan, and the PC Zone requirements. Uh, of course, the, in the PC Zone, the SLR has been granted 16,000 units, 10 million, million square feet of non-residential. Uh, again, these are some basic things that we've gone through before. Uh, the neighborhood where it's located is the traditional neighborhood type, and that type identifies types of open space uh, that are to go there. Uh, so the school is looking at uh, 30.34 acres total, of which 26 would then be the net for the school site. Uh, they're proposing a 186,000 square foot two-story school facility. That would then equal 86 equivalent residential units, which measures the impact on the city and other utilities. Uh, so the total open space, including the school fields and the trail and 30-foot area along Redwood Road, a total of 13 and a half acres. Uh, three access points will be provided by Redwood Road and Tanner Lane, Redwood Road and Parkway Boulevard, and then Old Farm Road. Uh, their estimate this will bring actually 50 full-time jobs, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, 309 off-street parking stalls are proposed with 1280 accessible stalls. There will be an eight-foot meandering urban trail, is what's classified along the Redwood Road. The trail's master plan recommends 12. Uh, right now, the existing trail south of this along Redwood Road is an eight-foot meandering concrete. Uh, they're welcome, but they have agreed to and they're planning to comply with the, uh, the signage requirements that we have. Which road monument sign will be seven feet high and 45 square feet. And the sign they are proposing is five feet high and 23 square feet of sign area. And uh, because this is a school district, we are, we are somewhat limited to the requirements that we can't place on them. But because this is under SLR property right now, they are required to go through the community plan and village plan process. This is the elevation of the school you see here. Uh, the conceptual plan, of course, this will identify where the school sits, parking lots, landscaping, the play fields, whatnot. And the landscape plan, uh, of course, landscaping around the building itself, and the play fields in the, uh, in the, in the middle there, the, the one green and the lighter green on the right along the road, road, that would be part of the public uh, open space as well along with the trail. And the planting plan you see on the right. And so staff recommendation is approval with the uh, findings and conditions you see here. Thank you, Dan. Is the applicant of it here? Hi there. Could you state your name and address for the record, please? Frank Pulley, 490 North State Street, Linden, Utah. Frank, did you want to add anything to the presentation tonight? No. Okay. Well, this is a public hearing, so we will open up public comment for item number five. Community and Village Plan for the Alpine School District. Okay, given that there isn't any public comment, we'll close public comment, and we will, before we open this up to the Planning Commission, um, Dave, you mentioned that we have limited ability in what we are able to discuss. Could you could you briefly go over that for the public and for our sake yeah. as we make Actually, let me turn over to Kevin, the city attorney, he'll, he'll expound on that better than I can. Okay. So I'll, I'll try to get it all. There's, I'll probably miss some, so correct me, Dave, if I, if I miss something. So the city, okay, so yeah, yes, it's true that this is part of the district area plan, but that's just the same as any type of zoning regulation. And this, this is, a, you know, the applicant is a school district. Um, the Utah Code restricts our ability to impose 
any requirements that are related to aesthetics, fencing, landscaping, those types of requirements, location of the school. So we can't say, you know, schools can't be in a industrial zone or a residential zone. They can basically put it where, where they want to or need to. So anyway, that's, that's bas basically it. And then there's some restrictions on um, certain types of in impact fees under special circumstances. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, we'll open So up. I guess I should, maybe I should have clarified aesthetics, meaning like architectural requirements and things like that. Design. Design. And so right. forth, yeah. Thank you. We'll open this up to the Planning Commission for comment. Charlie's <laughs> tries, tries first this time. Okay. Well, I, the only thing I wanted to say was um, I, I was interested why we had a village plan, so Dave answered that. I guess I should probably expound on that. Typically, you see a community plan and a village plan, where the community plan looks at a broader area, when individual development parcels come in as a village plan. Because the school is not interested in, they're in the business of developing things beyond their school boundaries, it made no sense to have two separate plans because all we're looking at is just this one parcel itself, so they've been combined. And then, did I catch it correctly, that school will maintain the, the, the trail in front, or is that, did I miss that? Uh, I believe, yes, they will maintain, I, I'll look it up here, I believe that language is in my report here. I think that's great that they're willing to do that. And then my other question is the roads. Is that going to be part of the greater development, or how do the... The, the roads? The roads are going to go around the school. How yeah, they, they will they'll, they'll install all of Gordon, the, the exact dimensions, but it was half width and curb and gutter on the far side. It wouldn't necessarily be half width. It, it would be the full width with the curb and gutter on the other side. That's something that's part of the development from the school, or is the developer in, in general going to do that? How no, the, no, the school, that will be oh, part okay. of the development. All right, that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Kilgore. Uh, so in the, the calculation of the, of the ERUs, it sounds like there's a different, there are two methods. One, um, uh, that the applicant proposes in calculating the ERUs and the one that the that the district area plan calculates or uses. And so I was just wondering, if, is that is that an issue and uh, is there a consequence? Yeah, well, the only real consequence as far as the zoning and the use of the property goes is how many ERUs come off the, the grand total of the entire PC zone. And obviously, I think 86 ERUs is not going to you know really make a dent in the the thousands that are that are approved now. Uh, there are different ERU calculations that engineering uses as far as impact directly on on uh, utility systems. But because the DAP says we have to calculate non, non-residential uses as every 2,165 square feet is one ERU. So that's the ERU calculation we need to use. And that's what we use to track, you know, over the next 30, 40 years as we develop and screen the PC zone, we'll use these, whatever we develop and their ERUs, we'll take that off the, the grand total. So, you know, at some point, the PCs will be maxed out on ERUs. But we have to go by what's in the DAP. Okay, so, th yeah, that, that was my question. Because I really don't, I mean, I, I'm not really too concerned, um, since it sounds like water issues and all that, all that's taken care of, but, um, or at least it's been considered. But, you know, we always hear that um, the city code can be um, overridden by a DAP. In this case, we have a, a method, uh, a calculation method in the DAP, and then the applicant has a different one. So. As a as a planning commission, which one should we rec you know should, do we need right. to make that kind right, of? Yeah, in, in, in my recommendation, it says use the DAP calculation for ERU. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, don't don't be confused with the yeah. You know, so we actually don't have ERUs for water. They're called equivalent residential connections, um, and that's based off of our water impact fee, which is completely separate than Title 19, and how we determine ERUs for density purposes and zoning purposes so they're they're just two completely separate and different things and the seven the calculation of the 17.5 refers to impact fees and out the alpine school district will only have to pay um, for 17.5 if assuming that that calculation is correct 17.5 ERCs 
um, the 86 or whatever it is under the DAP that's that's what they're governed by as far as density for zoning purposes okay so is it so is the applicant okay that we're going with the DAP calculation instead of your instead of yours is that yeah, that's yeah, we're fine okay. good um, Is the uh, applicant able and willing to meet the conditions in the city engineer's report? There's some conditions in there that they request. <coughs> um, as far as my not, I haven't seen the, the full report from the, the engineer okay. yet. So, so excuse me, I, c I can add to that. There, there are only uh, three simple conditions. And uh, when it comes to uh, a motion, uh, I'd like to add a word to one of the conditions just to clarify one of the conditions says entire area under the community plan including the streets is subject to discharge restrictions that should say stormwater discharge restrictions um, so there are only th only three conditions there stormwater discharge restrictions yes which condition do you have that under? Um, well, in my report, I, I don't know how it reads in the planning report, but in my report, it was it was the first one of the conditions. Our, our says the maximum allowable ERU shall be calculated as described by uh, city center DAP. Yeah, it says all requirements of the city engineer shall be met. Does that satisfy that, your that, That's in my report. Gordon has, you had your own report. Yeah. Is, yeah Does the engineer report get moved into yours? Or, or is it just a global statement about mine? It should have been a separate report. But the, my, my, my condition kind of covers everything that's yeah. being asked by the city engineer. Right, so this the, city, the city engineer's report then has to be that the conditions? Because it sounds like it has to be edited by what he just said. Yeah, by what Gordon just said. Yeah, and if Kevin thinks that, yeah, if that. Gordon, could you, I could think, you just I tell think us it's that? clear what the intent of that condition is, and Gordon can correct that for the engineering report with the city council. Okay. So we don't need to make a, a special, it's a separate condition. Uh, I think it's clear what the intent um, See, uh, I was just wondering, so I know we can't say, uh, we don't have control over where the middle school is located, but just wondering why is the middle school being located uh, in this location? Do we know it's so close, since it's pretty close to Vista Heights? Yeah, just, just that'd, be, that'd be the applicant, why, why this school district has chosen this location. Okay. Um, one of the best reasons is just being able to find, you know, property large enough to to be able to place a, a middle school typically we like to see you know 25 to 30 acres and this is just the, the place where you know, our business services department was able to find you know the property to be able to, to put the middle school on okay um, and then last thing I have is your architectural drawings there is a uh, a metal roof access ladder showing in the, it was uh, listed as item 504.0. It's a metal roof access ladder. That's gonna, is that uh, hidden from view, uh, from the ground view? If we're looking at it. Can't really tell from the elevations. As, as far as that goes, that may go into the architecture requirement where we can't require that of a school. To, to Kevin can correct me, but that, I think that falls into architecture. If they can hide a grade, if they want to do that, I'd say more power to them, but I don't think that's something we can require of them. Yeah, I concur. Okay. Can you do it as far as health and safety? Yeah. No. That's up to them. Yeah. I mean, you, you can make the suggestion, and but that's really up to them. Okay. That's it for me. Thanks. Okay. Um, I understand that we can't require any more than they have offered but they have in here um, that um, under the guiding principles it's the school district's goal to integrate with local surroundings and keep in harmony with the standards set forth by the city of Saratoga Springs 
And I had the same concern about the um, ladder, outdoor ladder. And I've laughed. We had a son. Uh, we have a son who uh, lived in Southern California, and he got to come to Oregon and live with us because they found him on top of the school roof. And so it is a, a little bit of a safety issue. And it, even if we can't require it, I think it would be prudent for them to uh, have it <coughs> interior or have it locked off in some way. It would look better if it was interior. Now then, I'll go on to my other questions. One of them is just a general question, and I keep forgetting to ask it. Why is Redwood on some Redwood Road on some maps and notifications, and Westlake Road on GPS, cell phones, and tablets? Which is correct? Does anybody know? Uh, on some, you say it's called Westlake. Mm -hmm. It shows on all the maps, and, and uh, any time I uh, people have asked me at my, at my house, you know why, and I don't understand, and I didn't know that it had changed. So anyway, um, will the entire school site be fenced? Yes, except for out in front of the school. If you're familiar with Vista Heights, it'll be a similar. Um, I'm not. <laughs> not familiar with fist heights. So our back playing fields and stuff will be will be fenced. Okay. Uh, will the, uh, when you get neighbors that may be residential neighbors, will they be able to access that? And is the church counting that as part of their open space? I don't, I'm not aware if the church is counting as their open space. Um, we typically, um, Try not to put too many openings in our in our fence that access into the playing fields, just for the safety of the kids while school is in session. Okay. But they will be accessible from where our parking and stuff is. So if community wants to come after school hours to to use the fields, which they do a lot, um, we ask them just to park in our parking lot and access the fields that way. And what is the parking that is gated off? That's in the rear of the school. Most of that's just a service entrance where we maintain the, the fire loop. Um, well, it's got a lot of parking back there, too. Uh, what, 10, 15? Probably. Yeah, so mainly for, you know, some of it's our, you know, maintenance staff and kitchen staff that their services are in the back, and, and there'll be maybe some, a little bit of faculty parking, but, but very minimal. Okay, and um, is all of, or how many of your ADA spaces have you planned to be van accessible? You know, we just follow what the, the ADA code and that requires to, to make that. To, I haven't walked through and, and counted them, but whatever the code requires, we'll make sure that they're, that they're there. I will hold you to that. Okay. <laughs> and um, is your mechanical equipment going to be screened from view? Yeah, if I can answer that, the ladder that you were seeing in the, the elevation view, that is actually a mechanical penthouse that's up on top of the, the school. So those are, those are all screened indoor they're actually kind of mechanical rooms on on top of the roof and that that mechan that ladder that you see is actually to get on top of that mechanical penthouse that's up on top of the school is it exposed where you see it we can certainly take a look and make sure that it is aesthetically pleasing so it's um we, we want our schools to look nice and to make sure they look nice in the neighborhood so um i can certainly have an architect look at it to make sure that it's looks nice we have in the past required that they be interior and uh, or you know so kids can't get up on the roof <laughs> and up to your mechanical equipment yeah so this being a two-story school so that mechanical penthouse is up on top of the two-story school so there's no way for kids to well, they act. can't they no. can't get that uh, get to the ladder and get up there no no it's on top of the ladders actually uh -huh. on top of the school where the mechanical penthouse is so okay I yeah i mean i guess if you had a really tall ladder you could get up <laughs> on the school but yeah it's where okay it's located. and in other words it, from the ground level to there is to, no okay that, that's all interior f to be able to access the roof and stuff is all inside that answered that question and then um i noticed that you have um a wrought iron gate on your garbage surrounds Again, we as a city have required uh, 
and would ask you nicely if you would make that a solid gate. It just it, it looks better. <laughs> it keeps garbage from flying out. Certainly happy to take that under consideration. Yeah, understand your concern there for sure. Okay, that's it. Thank you. I do have a couple couple more questions, um, mainly in reference to the transportation plan. And it says on here, you know, it's all in harmony with our our transportation master plan. But what I wanted to know was this Tanner and Wayne. It says it won't be a major intersection for the school but will people still be able to access the school and drop off from this direction or how are you going to get people to use parkway boulevard to kind of create the flow for drop off yeah they'll still be able to access through tanner lane but at parkway boulevard you dot i know has planned for a, a traffic signal there so that our intent is that would encourage people to use that intersection because instead there's a traffic signal. Tanner instead, Lane. Instead so we would hope people drive up to Parkway Boulevard if they're coming from the south end of the city. Yeah. Okay. And then my other question was, you had a couple bullet points on the traffic study. Can we see that? Is that something we can look at just out of curiosity? Traffic study, we have provided it to the city staff. Okay, can we get a copy of it maybe? I don't see it in our packet. Yeah, we, we can get that to you. Okay. And my last question was same, kind of similar to Commissioner Steele's with those parking spots in the back. Is this going to be a one-way street to access those, or how will you kind of signify that? Yeah, it's just, it's really only for staff. Usually that's um, kind of closed off besides for staff. Yeah, it is kind of just a, it's a minimal road to, to meet the fire lane requirements okay. to go around. I was just hoping to make sure that people trying to use the tennis courts don't come back and park there, you know. But those are all my questions. Thank you, Mr. Pulley, for your time. I'll entertain a motion. Oh, just real quick. Um, I believe it was Commissioner Cunningham you asked about who's maintaining the open space along the road. My computer is being slow. I find it, 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 it does state in the plan that it is actually Alpine School District property. They will own and maintain. Uh, the trail and the landscaping around the trail. Okay. I move to recommend approval of the Saratoga Springs Middle School community plan and village plan with the findings and conditions as stated in the uh, planning staff packet. We have a motion from Commissioner Kilgore. Do we have a second? I second. Do we have a second from Commissioner Steele. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you for your time. Okay, we're going to move on to item number six. This is continued item from January 11th, 2018, pre preliminary plat for Perel Meadows, located approximately 7350 North, 9440 West. Larry Jacobson, or Silver Sage Financial, is the applicant. And we'll turn the time over to Nora for the presentation. Yep. Um, good evening. So you have seen this before in several forms. Um, this property was annexed to um, uh, into Saratoga Springs on November 8th. And the original application was actually made quite a few months before that. And um, there was, there's a, there was a long process that resulted in the annexation, including a protest by Lehigh. Um, but that was all finished and done, and it was, in fact, annexed and zoned um, R19, so allowing 9,000 square foot lots. Um, and this is the next step in the process, which is the preliminary plat. After the preliminary plat, um, they will go and do some final plats, and probably two of them because the project is phased. Uh, this is, again, just reminding you of where this is in the grand scheme of things. The, ones with the, one, the property with all the colors is McLaughlin, which has also been approved to be annexed, but has not yet been annexed. We're still working on the development agreement, but we expect it to be annexed to Saratoga Springs. And then the little property to the right um, that's labeled Web Lakeview, they actually are, have been um, approved for annexation in Lehigh. So they will not be coming in to the city um, and they will be asked to withdraw their application um, with Saratoga City since they are going into Lehigh. Um, so 
the site plan is very similar to the concept plan that we th that we saw through the the um, zoning and annexation process um, that already occurred. There are 112 parcels, um, and then there are seven parcels that actually um, will be annexed into Lehigh. And uh, Dave, I don't know if you can kind of show where those are. I tried to outline them in red, but for some reason when I transferred the file into the thing, it, the red went away. I don't know why. Um, yeah, the ones that are going into Lehigh all along Evans Drive. And then there's that weird little one on the right. That actually, while it's surrounded on three sides by um, Saratoga Springs, it will actually be annexed into Lehigh because its access is off of that Evans Drive, um, which is a Lehigh Road. And that's why it's configured that way. It does look kind of weird, but it makes the most sense because that is where the access point for that lot is. I just wanted to explain that. Sandra actually brought that up. Um, and it's, I thought it was weird when I first saw it too. So in terms of open space and amenities, um, they have a really thorough amenity package. And um, it includes two developed parks with picnic tables, pavilions, benches, those kinds of things. Um, and then a connecting bridge over, over Dry Creek that connects the two sides of the subdivision, which is a significant amenity, as well as a paved trail along Dry Creek that will then hook into other trails. Um, and they want it to be paved so that you know neighbors and baby strollers and all those kinds of things can utilize the trail. Um, and they also are enhancing the landscaping along the Dry Creek Creek corridor to make that a better experience. This is the landscape plan and the open space plan. Um, I also included in your packet the calculations and hopefully you know you had a chance to take a look at those. They're providing more than they need to so they have more points than they absolutely have to have. And this is the project summary which again is included in your packet. There are, all the lots are over 9,000 square feet, which is what's required. Um, they have the amount of open space area they need. There's a little bit of sensitive lands. Um, not a lot. It's basically kind of the bottom of Dry Creek. Um, so that's what's proposed. And, you know, you have options which are outlined in the staff report to forward a positive recommendation, a negative recommendation, or to continue a specific direction to staff. This does have to go through a final plat before it actually gets approved. And there are some, there's still some engineering um, things that need to be addressed. And it's a possibility that there's storm drainage um, detention may reduce the number of lots by one or two. Um, they understand that. We've been working with them on that. Um, and again, that will all have to be worked out before we get to final plat. Um, but we are asking for you to forward a positive recommendation to the City Council now. Um, we have Gordon and his folks have ongoing conversations with the engineer for this project, and we expect those to continue. And it's moving in a positive direction. So there's a recommendation for approval, and then I have alternate motions for continuance or negative recommendation. Thank you for your presentation, Senior Planner Shepard. Is the applicant here? They are. Would you like to join us? And please state your name and address for the record. Larry Jacobson, 9533 South, 7th East in Sandy. And this is Scott, the engineer. He can probably answer questions better than I can, but I'll try. Hi, Scott and Larry. Did you want to add anything else to the presentation tonight? OK, then this is a public hearing. So we will actually, sorry, we've already closed the public hearing for this. So we'll open up to the Planning Commission. Um, I was looking for on Exhibit B, there, up, it talked about uh, showing what the score was for the open space amenities. Did we have a, because it's not there. Because when I looked, I was looking for something specifically for the score.
I can provide that to you. Um, okay. I thought, I mean, I thought I combined all those documents in, into one, the worksheet and the plan, but apparently that. Up above it, it referenced that it would show the, the, the okay. table for the, for the complete score on Exhibit B, but you go down to Exhibit B, and it says total open space requirement, 10% of subdivision, acreage, minimum equivalent, open space acreage, right. when acre, anyway, but it doesn't, I was looking for- The table. You know, yes. Yeah. Um, I intended to include that, but I can certainly send it to you. Um, we've gone over it a number of times. Um, it sounds like they have a lot of amenities. Um, and I, that was one of the comments I wanted to make, is it looks, I really appreciate that you've incorporated the Dry Creek area in. And I think this will be a, a nice development for people to live in. And that's all the comments I had. Thanks. We do still need some details on some of those uh, amenity structures, but that's, you know, that's part of the construction drawings and not necessarily part of the preliminary plat review. This is Commissioner Kilgore. I just wanted to um, clarify. So after we annex, or for, as far as the annexation goes, um, we want through, we want and, uh, and then now we're giving back, or w was that net, that? With the web annexation, the one next year? Yeah, year? yeah. Um, I, this annexation in particular, Pirelli, is moving forward and has been annexed into okay. the city of Saratoga Springs and recorded and all that, so it's all done. The project just to the east um, is the Webb Lakeview annexation, and um, they have chosen to go into Lehigh. Um, they've been, there have been some negotiations with the Lehigh about zoning and entitlements and those kinds of things, and they have chosen to do that. It's kind of part of a bigger picture. Lehigh and um, Saratoga Springs have been working together to try to come up with agreement on annexation policy boundaries, and it's part of that discussion um, that there was some agreement, an interlocal agreement was entered into between the two councils that tries to give some resolution to what gets annexed to where. Um, and so part of that agreement was that the Lakeview web property be annexed into Lehigh. Okay, is that parcel A? Is that, is? No. Uh, oh, so that's no, different, no, no, parcel that's A is different then? Yeah, oh, it's, it's a little piece that is that um, Dave showed that's, you. Is it's, that it's seven lots. Uh -huh. It's on Evans Drive, <coughs> and it's that seven lots plus that little funny corner one. That, that's parcel A. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, because it, it talked about phase one, phase two, and then parcel A, and I didn't see a, a picture of parcel A or a mark out. But okay, that's now now it's clear. So we don't have to worry about that not being on there then. Um, okay. Um, Oh, this might just be a typo, but that report references um, under the condition and refers to an exhibit D. Um. Yeah, so under the first condition, Exhibit D is—is is there an Exhibit D? That's Exhibit C. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see an Exhibit D. Well, maybe that—that's just a typo. No, it's—it's it's a little nitpicky, but yep. just yep. Um. Executive summary says that, oh, yeah, the executive summary in the staff report says there's 42.46 acres, but the subdivision table shows 36.4 acres, as, as, as well as the city engineer's report. So I wonder what the difference is. I don't know what Scott addressed that. Okay. Okay. <coughs> the annexation was 42 point something acres. Uh, that included annexation of Saratoga Road, which previously was county, um, and so the city asked us to include that. So there's a long stripe of acreage that belongs to Saratoga Road as part of that. And then there's also the lots that are going to end up in Lehigh fronting on Evans Street. 
So, so some of those are not part of the subdivision, hence the subdivision acreage is less. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, let's see. I'll call it page one. If there's a this under the conditions again. This time it's the I think it's the yeah it's the engineer report under the conditions. Uh, J. Uh, does talks about new, needing to spell out um, additional engineering being performed. And I'm just wondering, do we need to spell out what that, what that, do we need to, does the, does the Planning Commission need to spell out what, quote, additional engineering being performed means? Or is that taken, is already understood? Do, I believe it's already understood. It's a general statement. Um, I don't think we need to go into the details. Okay. And preliminary plats, um, we often get information with preliminary plats that are, that are actually what's really necessary for a final plat. So um, while we're often, we often are further along with the engineering, in this case, it will all have to be agreed to prior to any kind of final plat approval. Um, and as I said, that our engineer and their engineer are working together daily on moving, moving toward that. Okay, terrific. It's an administrative um, yes. thing, so that's why I'm just being a little bit specific. And then um, there aren't any uh, minimum SIP setbacks um, or like a water server utilities and things like that. Is that something that's going to come in the, in the next phase or is that something that uh, just doesn't, isn't required here? What? Like setbacks, setbacks, minimum setbacks. They, they are shown on the, uh, the site plan, the minimum setbacks. I mean, I just showed them. I have to calculate. 71. See the site plan. <laughs> Not shown on there. How do we know if that's if that 25 or 20 feet or? I can't really see it from here. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the site plan and plat, the plat documents do include the building envelopes and setbacks. I don't know if it's a particular one I put in, in the presentation tonight, but the package of drawings um, doing, does include that. Okay. Because I, yeah, I noticed in the checklist it didn't really talk about whether uh, the setbacks comply or not. And they do. Okay. Um, and it, they're also providing two car garages and then two parking spaces per. Okay. Um. And I guess there's water for. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I, don't any, uh, I just have one comment, I guess. Um, and it, uh, I guess I'm the third, second, maybe the third, to just appreciation for the amenities and the open space you have in. It's refreshing. Too often we have to fight for, you know, just to have that meet code. And uh, it is refreshing to see um, somebody to put in open space and amenities above code. <laughs> And so I think it's going to contribute to a, a good environment for residents. And um, I hope I hope this trend continues. I hope you're setting a precedent. All I have is ditto for that. We do appreciate you. I do have just one question. So what is the difference between the limited access detention basin and the detention area slash play field? Is it a depth difference, or what, what makes those two? Why is one limited access and one is a play area? Right, so size uh, and turf and location, depth and slope, all of those things fall into um, the one that's right in the center uh, is much easier to play in and use uh, for more things. Uh, small ones around the perimeter are a little harder to use, so we refer didn't take credit for them as anything more than just limited. Okay, that's kind of what I was asking. Will it be fenced off or anything? When you say limited access, just mean it's difficult to access or we won't want anyone accessing it? It doesn't us. really have other purposes besides the detention. Okay. Uh, so we, we didn't take count the points in your system for. Okay. Yeah, the limited access is a, it's a defined um, thing in our open space calculations. 
and it has to do with um, the amount that you get to count for the open space course. So it, you know, they're only they're not allowed to count that because it's because limited it's access. Limited. <laughs> okay. Kids could still use it as a sled, like a sledding area and stuff like that. No, it's, it's open for that, small, right? The issue really was about the points in your spreadsheet. Right, right. We right. had plenty of points. We needn't uh, yeah. get any more, so we didn't ask for credit. Scrounging for, for points in detention areas. <laughs> That's all for me. Okay, we'd like to. Well, we're not the ones who make the actual decision, but we'd like to welcome you to the city. So, um, I'll entertain a motion. I move to forward a positive recommendation to the City Council for the Perel Meadows preliminary plat subject to the fi uh, following findings and conditions with the change on condition one that the um, engineer's condition are in exhibit C rather than D. We have a motion com from Commissioner Steele. Do we have a second? Second. second. You can have I'm going to judge that one with Commissioner Brush because she's new. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have a question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Do we need a break or can we push through? Yes. Okay. We'll take a five minute break. <laughs> Good, thanks for all your help. 